TV. Today is the 20 of February uh, 2023. Remember, guys, to like, share, comment, and follow. And so, guys, uh, the recent spread of attacks on immigration communities in and around Johannesburg uh, inner city has forced human rights advocacy group, the Social Economic Rights Institute of South Africa, SERI, to, op- uh, to prepare litigation against members of Operation Tudula. According to Zolile Shunde, a candidate attorney at SERI, uh, they will be filing a, a court papers with supporting affidavits from some of many victims targeted by Operation Tudula. This follows uh, the violent and forceful mass eviction allegedly by Operation Dudula members of about 400 people from the Ellis Park building, also known as Msebi House, in Don 14 in December. The eviction was very violent. We are consulting clients and plan to take legal action against Operation Dudula. Those who were evicted are now scattered across the job uh, the job CBD. Tudula as an organization is difficult because we have little information about who they are, said Shude. Shude said the Tudula is not above the law, despite the movement's claim that it wants to restore order by conducting these illegal evictions. They are conducting illegal evictions without considering that the Unlawful Occupation of Land Act PIE exists. But with Dudula, it's not just evictions, it's turning people away from healthcare, it's chasing children out of school, stopping informal traders, and all of these things which are violent and unconstitutional. All of these things are happening in front of the police who are said to be doing nothing. We are concerned and we will try and see what is possible legally going forward, said Shude. Ground Up recently visited a group of 40 families who were among 400 people forcefully evicted from the Ellis Park building. The same members of Operation Dudula raided the building where assaulting mostly immigrant people, confiscating their furniture and many other belongings. Oh, we visited mostly women and children they said they had nowhere to go and are now squatting in two rooms in a building on Jeep Street. Inside the rooms are piles of bags filled with whatever they could grab during the charity eviction. The remaining space in the rooms is shared at night with several of them also sleeping in the passage outside too. Operation Dudula spokesperson Zandile Dabula promised to respond to our questions sent to her via WhatsApp on January 30 and again on 15 February, but did not uh, do so. According to the city of Johannesburg, Musibi House is owned by a company called Paper Fountain, Prop 59 Private Limited. Ground Up has not been able to find direct contact information for the building owners. When this reporter contacted the law firm representing them, the firm refused to share client information. According to an eviction application dated November 2018 against the occupiers and the city of Johannesburg as respondents, the building owners first filed papers to have the group removed in 2011. The application was opposed by occupiers who requested that the city assist by providing them with alternative accommodation. The documents stated that in March 2013, the city told the court that it first needed to compare a report accessing the personal circumstances of each occupant before it can decide how best to assist the group. In its report based on limited information, the city found that about 480 people, of which about 30 were young children at the time, lived in the building, but in January 2014, the city told the court that it was unable to roll out temporary emergency housing facilities as its implementation was being challenged in a different uh, court case. As a consequence of the city's stay application, no further action was taken in, in this matter until July 2018 when the case was re-enrolled. The city then conducted an occupy audit in August 2018 and discovered that the five-story building had no electricity or running water. Occupants were using public toilets and taps across the street. The court document read, the city also found that the building was predominantly occupied by Zimbabwean nationals, but a large number of occupants were not keen to be accessed. Likely out of fear they would be detained or reported to home affairs. The document stated that the city argued that the non-citizens in the building be given until January 2019 to respond. Lawyers at the Legal Resources Center representing the immigrant families obtained an interim order before the lockdown was implemented for COVID-19 to prevent the eviction because no alternative accommodation had been provided. ARC attorney Shata Asim said the interim court order is therefore still effective to date 
the court did not grant an order to evict the occupants, which means the eviction by Dudula was illegal. Occupiers said Dudula members handed out written warnings for them to vacate the building early in December, which they ignored. But late on December 17, they said a known man stormed the building, forcing people out of the units. The family says despite reporting this to the police, they received no help. Many of the people who were in the building are visually impaired, disabled, and survived by begging on the city streets. One of the occupants, Yuda Rubatika, said she is too traumatized. She said she had lived in the building for 12 years. Become tearful as she recounted the events on the day of their eviction. I remember coming home to a lot of commotion. People were screaming as they ran for their lives. I ran upstairs and was only able to salvage a few bags before members of the doula came to beat and chase me away. Some furniture and groceries were left behind never to be recovered, she said. We made so many memories and raised children there, but all was lost in one night. She and her husband are currently living in one of the two rooms with 19 others. Another occupant, Susan Tasari Ravona, was forced out of her home with her two children, one of whom is disabled. Her plan was to go home in December with a few savings and groceries she had saved from begging at robots. Everything was lost during the eviction. Now I sleep with my children in a room with many others. I tried to go back to the building just to ask for my children's clothing and diapers, but I was threatened and told to go back to Zimbabwe, Saratirawona said. Margaret Maushe and her children had lived in the building for 10 years. She is a wheelchair user and survived by asking motorists for money to feed her children. Margaret Maushe lived in the building with her children for 10 years. She remembers how people kicked the room open and ordered her and her children out of the room. She said that she wasn't able to move because of her disability, but they insisted that she leave. Moshe claims that her children were assaulted as her neighbors assisted her out of the building. I even left my wheelchair there and, an, and I'm unable to go to the robots to ask motorists for money and cannot raise money for rent at the room she shares with other occupants in a separate building. Moshe said, I seem the LRC Anthony said they were informed that members of the doula never disclose we sent them or nor did they provide any written authorization. LRC is now planning litigation to get those stranded occupants back to the building, she said. Some occupiers are also being assisted by Bishop Paul Veni of the Methodist Church. The organization Zimbabwe Isolated Women in South Africa has been providing the residents with food and helping them register for repatriation. It's not easy for anyone to be evicted to homelessness. I'm planning to consult with the city to see if they can assist with accommodation for the evictees, Van said. City of Johannesburg spokesperson Katisi Modingane told Ground Up that the city was not aware of the eviction nor any court order to evict the occupants. When asked about the request for alternative accommodation, Modingane said the city does, does provide alternative accommodation in eviction matters as ordered by the courts. An eviction order is being sought by the owner and as usual the city is the respondent. Out of the 132 households, 95% consists of undocumented foreign nationals. Modiana said the city was not aware of protests or activities by Operation Dudula where immigrants operate around the city. Gauteng Police Spokesperson Dimakiso Selo said, with regards to allegations that police turn a blind eye when the crime is committed, the public is urged to report such complaints to the police so that investigations and disciplinary actions can be instituted against such members. So guys, that's the latest here. And uh, yes, I mean, uh, it just shows how uh, bad the situation is for some of our brothers and sisters who are living in South Africa. Yes, uh, we are from Zimbabwe. And uh, life is not as rosy as many think. Which can uh, South Africa. Yes, some people are struggling there. And uh, and so I just wish that uh, the Zimbabwean embassy can um, speed up that rep repatriation um, uh, project so that uh, many Zimbabweans as uh, well as South Africa can return home, can go back to Zimbabwe because yes, I mean, I want to say that I want to say that I and it's not healthy for children. It's not a good safe environment for children, uh, for parents who are 
in those small small apartments and then got him job big so I mean it's not okay it's bad you even know why I could so I was in bubble but I don't want to put on a marriage that is my bad so talk on so good so I don't want to manage the sim embassy the sim consulate the pen of fun and wage but sir who cannot afford to go back and I would so hope that uh, they will uh, speed up the project a repatriation to those who wants to go back to Zimbabwe because things are not well things are not okay daily news breaking news everyday news on Prince Millen Entertainment TV thank you for listening and watching remember guys to like share comment and follow bless up